All right, so what we're going to cover today is a Amazon interview question. I heard this was on like phone screenings or something. Um, it is the level order traversal of a binary tree. A binary tree, you'll have a little cool graphic there. So first off, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and like this video. My goal is to build one of the world's most useful uh, resources for interview prep. This is why I give every video a table of contents. This is why I'm doing a video a day. There are so many topics that are necessary for you to understand to pass a software engineering interview. Unless you just get the questions that you already know or you just know a certain set of topics and you get asked those topics. But my approach is to just become a generally good uh, computer scientist, become good at answering these kinds of questions so that when you're in an interview, you know that whatever is thrown at you, you have a decent ability to handle it. So anyway, today's question, a level order traversal of a binary tree. So what I have here is a binary tree. And what we see is we have the traversal of the binary tree. We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how is that related to the way we traverse this tree? As you can see, we go level by level, top to bottom, left to right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to walk you through the way you should think about this or could think about this if you have never seen this question. So whenever you get a question, the first thing to start out with is what do I already know? What do you already know? When you're going into an interview, if you even got in that situation in the first place, you probably already know something. You probably already know what a binary tree is. You probably already know your pre-order traversal, your in-order traversal, and your post-order traversal. You already know how to traverse a binary tree structure. And I also did a video on the traversals and like a tiny binary tree bootcamp thing. So the first thing to start off with is tell your interviewer, okay, you're asking me to do a traversal. May maybe I've never heard of level order. Maybe I've never heard of these other things, but I know how to do my basic traversals. That is a stepping stone. You have your foot now in the door to bring yourself to a greater understanding. And so now I would ask you, how do we traverse the tree level by level? So first off, I want you to make a mental connection. This is where our knowledge of data structures come in and we realize that all trees are acyclic connected graphs and an acyclic connected graph is a tree. So if we have an acyclic connected graph, it, it might not look like a tree, it might look like this. Okay, so this is the first mental leap I need you to make with me. So what do you see here? Do you see a graph or do you see a tree? So what you see is actually both. You see an acyclic graph, you see a graph, it has no cycles, but it's also a graph, it, it, it has nodes with, with edges, but at the same time, it's a tree because a tree is a acyclic connected graph. So what does that mean? Again, remember acyclic means no cycles and connected means that all of our nodes are connected and there's no disjoint segments over here. This is all together in one, one piece. So what do you notice here? Is this different from what I showed you before? And it's actually not different. Let me show you the levels of this tree. And I really want you to notice what I'm doing right now. Here is level one. This is our root. This is the first level out from the tree. And do you see how I'm saying levels? Now that we've drawn this mental connection, we now know we have our graph fundamentals open to us. We can do depth first search or we can do breadth first search. But I want you to notice how I'm about to circle this graph. So here's level one. Let's go out one more level. Here is level two. Let me show you one more level out. Let's see level three. Do you see how this is the third level out? So we start at one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So do you see how a tree is actually a graph? And do you see how we are going out level by level? And now let's finish it off and do the final level, the fourth level. So. Now we see all the levels of our original tree. And now that you understand that a tree is just an acyclic connected graph, 
Now we have our fundamentals open to us and let's go back to our original tree and do exactly what I just did. Okay, so now we have our original tree and now my job is I'm going to do the level by level analysis again and let's see if this is how we want to solve this problem. So what is level one? What is level one? Let's circle it. That is level one. Now let's look at level two. Now let's look at level three. And now let's look at level four. So do you now notice the pattern? Do you now know which kind of search we want? For a level order traversal, you see that we want to go level by level. How do I go level by level in a graph? I showed you the levels. Also, a great resource is my video on depth first and breadth first search. So this is a breadth first search. This is the huge breakthrough you need to solve this problem. The key to doing a level order traversal of a graph structure, which a tree is a specific kind of graph structure, is that we need to do a level order traversal. Do you see how each level is getting hit? If this were a graph, we would go out in circles. But this is a tree, so we're gonna go level by level. We're still doing a level order traversal as if this is a graph. Well, it is a graph. As if it's a graph, but it's going to do a level by level traversal. So what do we use for a breadth first search? We know our data structures and we know a queue is what we use for breadth first search. And what do we use for depth first search? We use a stack, whether it is the call stack or it is our own stack we create. It is all about the behavior that the data structure enforces. A queue enforces first in, first out. A stack enforces last in, first out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through how a queue traversal will happen. And all we need is a queue. We don't need a hash set. We don't need a hash table of any sorts because this is going to not have cycles. It's acyclic. It's a tree. It's a acyclic connected graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through our breadth first search using a queue. So let's start that right now. Okay, so we have our binary tree here. We have our queue. This is the front, this is the back, and we have our output. So our output has to be in sequential order. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin our breadth first search using a queue. What we're going to do is we are going to add the root to the search. So add one to the queue. And notice that I circled the one. This means that it is the node. We are adding a reference, a pointer to the node of one. We know we need to process it. So after I add one, the start node into the search, I begin the search. I enter the while loop. Again, the code is in the description. If you want to read that, I have that for reference. Code is in the description. As always, it is always there. Description. So what do we do? We enter the while loop, we look. How large is the layer? How big is this layer? The size of the queue is one. So this is how many elements we are going to process in this iteration of the while loop, in this layer. Layer zero, layer one, call it whatever you want, is going to be the root. So what I do is, I first, I pull this item and I print it. So now you see one is output, and what I do is I add its left and its right child. And the order matters. I add the left before I add the right. So I add two and I add three. Okay, so now our queue has two and three. So we knew we only had one item in the layer. So now our next while loop iteration, we now see how large is the layer. It is two items long. That is layer one, that's the next layer. So what do we do? We're going to process two items. We're going to process out these items. So first we process the two. Let's print two and add its children to the back of the queue. And you see that two's children are four and five. And now we are done processing two and now it is three's turn. And now we process three and now we add three's left and three's right child. And that was the processing of two items. We see that that is the layer. So now our next while loop iteration, what is the size of the layer that we just prepared for ourselves? The size is four. That is this layer. And do you see 
how this is a layer? This is so critical. Breadth first search goes layer by layer. It's literally like a circle and depth first search goes deep. It goes deep first. It goes in, in depth first. And I have a video on depth first search of searching a maze. So that is a good example of depth first search. So we remove the four. That is the first element to process and we output four and we add its left and right child. All we do is add eight. Okay, so five is next. So we process five, we just output five. Does five have any children? And we notice five, six, and seven have no children. Five, six, and seven are what we are about to process. So five adds nothing, we're done with five. And now we process six. And again, six has no children. So we're done with six. So seven, let's process seven. And finally, seven has no children. So we're finished with this layer. And now we go into the next iteration of the while loop. And we say, how large is this layer I'm working with? It has a size of one. So what we're going to do is we're going to print eight, add eight's children. We have nothing and nothing, nothing is added. And now we're done processing eight. And now I come to the top of my while loop and I say, what is the size of my layer? Well, the queue is empty. There is no size and I'm not even going to continue with the iteration because the queue is empty. Actually in the code, it wouldn't even get to where it checks the layer size. It would just see that the queue is empty. And then we know the breadth first search is finished. And what do we have here? We have the level order traversal of our binary tree but in reality, it's actually a graph. It's a acyclic connected graph. And when you can make that mental connection in your brain, it becomes simple because we unlock our ability to execute our fundamental searches. So that is all for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. My goal is to make this one of the world's largest resources for software engineering interviews. I don't know how large of a channel or resources will ever become, but I'm going to try to make it as exhaustive as possible and give all that I know on this channel so that other people uh, can learn and grow from it. So that is all for this video. And now we got to take a thumbnail photo because I forgot.